Famed American educator Tully C. Knowles once said, the greatest thing about man is his ability to transcend himself, his ancestry, and his environment, and to become what he dreams of being. Inspirational words for sure, and words that two hosts from Mile High Sports Radio appear to have taken to heart. For Reno Nataro and Carl Hungus, hosts of Elephants in the Room, heard weeknights on Mile High Sports Radio, that ability to transcend and to dream goes far beyond their athletic and radio careers. My name is Reno Notaro and my childhood dream isn't what you'd expect for a man of my stature. Growing up in Pascristan, Mississippi in Houston, Texas, my friends dreamt of being the next Nolan Ryan, the next Archie Manning, but not me. After school, we'd head to the park and play games with a stick and a ball, whether it was pickle or knockout or home run derby. I'd excel at all of them. And because of my superior athletic ability and my superior prowess, led me on to my college career, an outstanding baseball career at Loyola University, a, a, a very successful and championship career in rugby at Tulane University, Colorado State University, which moved me on to my award-winning and highly successful broadcasting career that I'm currently in right now. But all the while, I've secretly wondered, after all these years, what might have been, what might have come if I'd followed my passion, if I'd followed my dream. My name is Carl Hungus, and uh, like my partner on the radio, I too was cursed with a body built to excel at sports at the highest level. Uh, my size and strength took me all the way from the tiny hamlet of Little Rock, Arkansas, to the University of Colorado Buffaloes in a 2001 Big 12 championship, the only one that school would claim. Now I'm one of the most popular talk show hosts in Denver, and I achieved more success on the playing field than most men dare dream. But even the thrill of victory at the highest level, it couldn't help fulfill my one true desire, to dance. It came as no surprise to the executives at Mile High Sports Radio when they were asked to select two members from their ranks to serve as celebrity judges for Denver Nuggets dancer audition. What did come as a surprise was who stepped forward. Most people look at me and they think lineman, bouncer, strongman competitor, and I get it, but no one sees what I see. Five move. Four 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 move. It's always been the same for me. Reno, can you help me open this jar? Reno, can you help me move this giant slab of concrete? Reno, we have a fridge, we've got to move it to the attic. Never, Reno, would a jute or a plie be better in this situation? Reno, jazz hands, no jazz hands? Never that. It's frustrating, it's really, really frustrating. Fortunately for Mile High Sports and for Amy Jo Wagner, coordinator and choreographer for the Denver Nuggets dancers, Reno and Carl were able to share that unrequited love for dance with 200 hopeful young ladies looking to live out their own dream to dance at Pepsi Center in front of a crowd of nearly 20,000 screaming Nuggets fans. Obviously, we were thrilled with the opportunity to help select the next class of Denver Nuggets dancers. And we are truly grateful and want to thank Mile High Sports, the Denver Nuggets, and Amy Jo for choosing us, especially when there were so many other clearly deserving candidates. You think of who could have been judges. Gil Whiteley, it goes without saying, he's a legend. Mark McIntosh, the comeback coach, a comeback coach, way to overcome those two right feet. And then there's the wild thing, Chris Bianchi, you probably know him more as Silk. So it's a dream come true, and we thank you. The elephants will never forget those childhood dreams. They may have experienced unparalleled success on the athletic field and continue to delight and wow audiences far and wide on the radio today. But that dream to dance still remains. And as such, they took their responsibilities in deciding the fate of these hopeful young ladies close to heart. The selection process was arduous. Along with Amy Jo and a panel of more than a dozen other judges, the elephants meticulously sifted through hundreds of headshots, resumes, and notes. The process took hours as the decision as to who stayed and who went weighed heavily on their mind. Knowing they could make or break a dream, 
with every yay or nay. One of the better kicks. I was really focused on the kicks. She got a lot of elevation. With nearly 200 beautiful and talented young ladies auditioning, to be selected to the final round is a true honor. But despite all the superb candidates, the elephants were forced to make cuts and send some Nuggets dancer hopefuls home unfulfilled. It was tough. Definitely one of the hardest things I've had to do in my professional career. To send someone home when all they wanted to do was dance, I know how hard that can be. And I've never even met Nigel Lithgow. I was once called the worst dancer in the history of Little Rock Junior Cotillion. Um, so it was really, really hard to, to not hear my number called for that last dance. And I never thought I'd have to make that call again. But Amy Jo needed us. She needed us there to make that hard call. If it were truly up to me, every girl would have made it. From a group of nearly 200, just 17 young ladies were selected, including nine that will make their debut in 2011 and begin living out their dream to be Denver Nuggets dancers. All thanks in part to two elephants who shared a dream of their own. And just because they've had more success on the playing field than in the radio booth, doesn't mean that Reno and Carl have completely given up the dream. To quote Ralph Waldo Emerson, the invariable mark of a dream is to see it come true. Mirror, 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 whitely and a whitely, linebacker and a spin. When we come back, a word from the outsider, Chris Dolge. <laughs> 